release of Lightyear, we finally have a new Pixar film debuting in theaters again. So today I'm gonna to stop and rank all 26 Pixar films from the worst to the best. Coming in in last place is Cars 2, easily the biggest misfire that Pixar has ever had. The movie oddly decides to abandon the racing car genre, instead making it a spy thriller. It sidelines the lead character Lightning McQueen and promotes the goofy side character to be front and center. And all of this just feels like a cheap attempt to appeal to the lowest common denominator as well as younger audiences. But at the same time, the movie includes torture. Not a great plan. All of this feels like it should be a direct-to-video spinoff, while at the same time not being as good as the actual direct-to-video spinoffs. The movie blatantly feels like it was greenlit because of the merchandising opportunities rather than because they had a compelling story. It is utterly lacking in the usual Pixar soul. Number 25, Turning Red. This movie really did not sit well with me. From the very beginning, I found the lead character to be more irritating than charming, and then her mother is so overbearing and clueless that it just didn't give me anyone to root for. From there, the movie feels like it's just kind of rehashing a lot of the ideas and themes of the movie Brave, and on a plot level, it's a reworking of Teen Wolf, except with a more on-the-nose central metaphor. Then the whole movie culminates in a sequence where the daughter starts twerking at her mother as an act of rebellion. And it includes several edgy jokes that I just found totally out of place in a Pixar film, especially one for children. So this movie just rubbed me the wrong way from beginning to end. Next up, Brave. To me, this felt like a lesser studio trying to put a clever twist on the usual Disney formula and missing the mark. But more importantly, it feels like this movie is retreading a bunch of ideas, themes, and even plot points that were already explored in How to Train Your Dragon. And because of that, this feels like an uncommon example of Pixar copying others rather than cutting their own path and being trendsetters themselves. Now, the basic setup about the mother and daughter and their dynamics was a little bit interesting. It felt like it was telling a story usually reserved for father-son films. So there was some potential here, but as soon as it went in the direction with the bear showing up, I just found the whole thing to be a little bit unbearable. And I thought my jokes were bad. Okay, maybe that's an exaggeration, but this to me is a movie that, while not embarrassing, it doesn't make gigantic mistakes. I just don't find it all that entertaining or engaging either. Coming in at number 23 is The Good Dinosaur. This movie had a lot of the same problems to me as the movie Brave, in that it feels off-brand and a little bit too familiar. From the basic plot about a rowdy human being teamed up with an intelligent dinosaur, to the overly cartoonish look of the dinosaurs themselves, this feels like a movie put out by a different studio because other studios have put out this movie before. Here I am. And speaking of the visuals, the combination of photorealistic CGI backgrounds with simplistic cartoonish dinosaurs never looked right to me. It also goes for some heavy emotional beats that you expect in a Pixar film, but they just fell flat for me. So another movie that's, it's, Fine, but totally forgettable. Number 22, Finding Dory, a movie that still has the fun and charm of the original, but from beginning to end, it just kind of feels like a rehash. Now, when the movie focuses in on Dory and her parents, it best kind of captures the magic of the first film. But for the most part, when it comes to the plot, it's a lot like a cover song. They're hitting all the right notes, it's a good song to hear. There's just nothing original. If I'm in the mood to go swimming with the fishes, I'm just gonna go watch Finding Nemo. Then we have Monsters University, a pleasant enough but very safe film for Pixar to make. Now, had this been a direct-to-video spinoff, 
It would have been a great little addition to the monsters world, but as a theatrically released prequel, it just feels awfully lightweight for Pixar. They take the characters of Monsters, Inc., they cram them into the plot template of Revenge of the Nerds, and it makes for a watchable, funny little adventure. But the sort of film you also forget in about five minutes. Now, if this was a movie that was put out by a different studio, it probably would have placed higher on the list. But when you're talking about a studio like Pixar that just has so many heavyweight, funny, emotional, original films, just making a fun film doesn't get you all that high up on the list. Real quick before we get into the top 20, remember to join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the Pixar films. My list isn't the right list. It's just my list and I would love to see yours. And this is a really tough set of films to rank because Pixar is one of the, if not the best film studio of all time. They consistently put out very high quality family entertainment. And so it's a very competitive ranking. And it also gets tricky because most of you grew up with a lot of these movies and whatever movies tie into your childhood, you will have an enormous amount of nostalgia for. Thus, our rankings will be very different. And that's a great thing. Bringing us into the top 20 is Cars 3. In general, this is a pretty good return to form for the Cars franchise, putting the focus back on racing as well as Lightning McQueen. On a plot level, it pulls from several sports movies like Rocky 3 and Talladega Nights. And while not doing anything particularly original with the story, that story template fits the Lightning McQueen character really nicely. Now, where this movie loses me a little bit is in the third act where it tries to get a little bit clever and have this plot twist and to me it just pulls me out of the movie because it abandons all logic all rules just so it can have a clever twist ending oops and i get that i'm watching a movie about talking cars but you have to have some rules some consistency in your universe otherwise i don't care about anything that's happening for the most part a solid addition to the Cars franchise while getting a bit of a flat tire in the last lap. At number 19, A Bug's Life. After Pixar's wild success with their first film, Toy Story, they ran into a little bit of trouble with A Bug's Life. Now, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of really great things in this movie. When it comes to the story, it uses misunderstanding to build conflict rather than just relying on the villain. I enjoy that they're pulling from Aesop's fables for some of the story material here. There's some good messaging about confidence, and there's a few great laughs in this movie. No, Harry, no! Don't look at the light! I can't help it. It's so beautiful. <laughs> But this is also the Pixar film that has aged the worst. Their ambitions exceeded where the technology was at. So some of the animation looks like PS2 cutscenes. The bugs themselves far too often look way too much like each other. And the environments at times are just bland and lifeless. And I really don't find Flick to be one of the more memorable Pixar protagonists. Still, you get the Pixar charm, emotion, and humor in there. I just don't think it's one of their better films. Next up, Luca, a charming coming of age story about friendship and accepting oneself. The characters are likable. There's some nice humor thrown into the mix. I dug it. It put a smile on my face. It just didn't make a particularly big impact on me. In fact, as I sat down to write my notes for this video, I couldn't come up with a whole lot of specific things to say about it. And to be very clear, when the movie came out, I watched it, I wrote a ton of notes, and then over the last year, my kids have rewatched it many times and I've rewatched it with them many times. There's just not a lot about it that just popped out. There weren't mistakes, there weren't things that annoyed me, there just weren't things that I loved about it either. It's just kind of right there in the middle, enjoyable enough Pixar stuff. Number 17, Soul, a beautifully rendered, thematically rich film that's just very hopeful and inspiring, but also one of the most inconsistent 
Pixar films. I liked the real world segments a whole lot more than the afterlife parts. Feels like they tried to apply the inside out bag of tricks to the afterlife, but this time around, I don't think it was nearly as entertaining or insightful. Likewise, once again, we have two opposites who get lost and have to get somewhere by a deadline. When it's good, it's great, but there's a bunch of stuff that I just don't think worked all that well. For me, it was much better as a celebration of life than an exploration of the afterlife. Then we have Lightyear, an enjoyable Pixar sci-fi film that finds a clever way to tell a new story with a familiar character. Though the standout here is actually Socks the Cat, who consistently delivers big laughs. Good night, Buzz. <sighs> The movie also does a good job of being a character study of the Buzz Lightyear character in the Toy Story universe, not the toy himself. Though I would say to do that, this movie feels more like it's a sequel to the movie that you expected it to be rather than the movie you expected it to be itself in that Buzz is a little bit older, more mature, more reflective, and instead of being the Space Ranger, he's trying to become the Space Ranger again. Also, with the title character overtly being an homage to a bunch of classic sci-fi characters. I'll never give in. You killed my father. No, Buzz. I am your father. No! That means inherently the story feels a little bit familiar and derivative. And I think the movie has a gigantic villain twist problem. So in general, it's an enjoyable Pixar Buzz Lightyear adventure, but it definitely doesn't soar to the heights of the rest of the Toy Story franchise. Number 15, Onward, a fun road trip movie that incorporates elements of Indiana Jones and a ton of fantasy. It combines a bunch of different genres and story templates together and does something original with them. Both of our leads are likable and relatable, and the movie itself just crescendos with this gigantic emotional punch. But this one is so frustrating because the plotting itself was distracting to me. How they got the map, how long it takes to get places, how things fit together. It felt like they knew the third act that they wanted, but they didn't put enough time thinking in how to get there. So they had to like sloppily duct tape together plot points so we could crescendo and have the big emotional payoff. It was so frustrating because it was so close to being great, but it wasn't quite there yet. We were on the verge of greatness. We were this close. Number 14, Cars, a charming tale about a fast moving, big city race car getting stuck in an old fashioned, breezy town populated by quirky characters. It has all sorts of themes about humility and kind of American nostalgia and how these small towns are getting passed by. They're simple, but they're very effective. And of course the racing sequences are dynamic, and exciting. What hurts this film for me is that Lightning McQueen is just too insufferable and unlikable in the first half of the movie. I obviously know they are setting up his character arc in the humility, but they didn't put anything in there to give him redeeming qualities in the first half. So I just didn't care about him enough until we get into the back half where he's starting to be redeemed. In general, it doesn't reach the emotional highs of the Pixar great films, but it does give us some great characters, some solid laughs. And so it's a nice rewatchable addition to the filmography. Next up is Coco, a delightful tale about death, the afterlife, and family tragedy. Wait, what? That explores ideas about family responsibility, regret, and pursuing your passion, all while showing this great love for music in general. This is a movie that has a very, very 
passionate fan base, including my wife, who says this is her favorite Pixar film. So when I have this movie outside of my top 10, they kind of take it as a personal attack. Is that like a personal attack or something? But as for me, the specific themes about family didn't really resonate all that well with me. And I found it to be pretty predictable. I could see where things were heading. It's a very good film. It's nicely paced and it builds to an emotional payoff. Number 12, Ratatouille, a bizarre concept for a film about a rat trained by a ghost to cook food by remote controlling a man by pulling his hair. Wow, that was weird. As weird as the concept is, it's shockingly down to earth with its themes about societal expectations and living up to legacy and pursuing your passion. Brad Bird just does a phenomenal job of capturing these very real human experiences in this insane story. Likewise, it has his usual vibrant dynamic style where even there's action sequences in this movie about cooking. Now, as amazed as I am with what Brad Bird was able to do with this movie, it's not one that I regularly choose to put on, though my kids put this one on all the time. Also, if you're a big fan of this movie, be sure to check out the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Number 11, Up. The first 10 minutes of this film are just a master class in visual storytelling, where we see a couple's life and love story, their highs and their lows, their setbacks. We understand their relationship. We feel all the right emotions. And it does all of this without needing to say a single thing word. Awesome! But for me, the rest of the movie isn't necessarily on that next level like the intro. I'm not throwing shade or anything like that. The characters are funny and interesting. It has a sharp sense of humor. I just don't connect with it as much. And as we've kind of mentioned several times in this list before, Pixar has an amazing set of films where ones like Ratatouille, Coco, and Up, for me, don't even crack the top 10 while still being great films. That's just how insanely good Pixar is. Bringing us into the top 10 is WALL-E. The first half of this movie is essentially a 21st century silent film that still manages to be just as engaging, funny and heartfelt as any other Pixar film. And that's almost entirely because of the design of Wally, both in his look, his mannerisms, and his little chirping noises that he makes, where he's able to be cute and relatable without needing to say a word. Then the movie throws a huge curveball and takes things into space. And whereas the first half of the movie was very slow and deliberate with the characters, it goes into full action mode in the back half with tension, stakes, and even a heroic sacrifice. The movie might be a bit heavy handed with its messaging, but it's a good sentiment. It's charming. It's incredibly unique. This is truly an achievement. Number nine, Incredibles 2. I know some people were disappointed by this one, but I thought it was a great time at the movies and a worthy successor to the original. Of course, Brad Bird is great with crafting these fantastic action sequences through the choreography, the shot selection, and it's also a movie filled with hilarious moments. <laughs> And this may be an unpopular opinion, but I prefer this plot and villain to Syndrome and his schemes. Of course, it's not as groundbreaking, fresh, or thematically satisfying as the original, but it's a pleasure to be back in this world, and I feel it was executed with excellence. Next up is Toy Story 3. Once again, Pixar breaks the odds and delivers a fantastic sequel. This time, they make a prison break movie with possibly the most diabolical villain in all of the Pixar canon with Lotso. The stakes are so cranked up up in this movie that there's a sequence where I actually thought it was possible that they might kill off and in fact burn to death all of my favorite toys. <laughs> Since the 
movie came out 15 years after the first film, the core audience of the original film grew up with Andy. And because of that, the movie's able to evoke extra emotion as you can really feel the passage of time as the audience grew up with the characters in this movie. And because of that, I think it just is able to bring the Andy trilogy of films to a great close. And number seven, Inside Out. Easily the Pixar film with the most emotions in it. Oh, okay, I see what you did there. It has all the fun and hijinks that you expect from a Pixar film, but it also visualizes what goes on inside of our heads with our emotions, through puberty, even in cognitive developmental stages are visualized in this film. And it does all of this in a way that's entertaining, but also sort of educational for children. And it captures our emotions and what goes on in our heads so well that there's even this incredibly emotional sequence where an imaginary friend sacrifices himself. Take her to the moon for me. Okay. It's the sort of movie that you can enjoy for the escapism, but it also explores our emotions, quite literally. Well, I guess not literally because it's all anthropomorphism. Never mind. Next movie. Coming in at number six is Toy Story 2. It keeps all the fun and emotions, but it finds new ways to explore them. Here, the group dynamics are shuffled around. Woody is off in the toy store, so Buzz has to step into that leadership role and lead the rescue mission. Because that's what heroes do. It's jam-packed with memorable sequences, whether you're talking about the Buzz Lightyear intro with all the parodies and homages or the Buzz vs. Buzz sequence or the bloopers during the credits or, of course, the heartbreaking Jesse sequence and song. What the movie does so well is capture that sense of childhood nostalgia and how growing up means change and moving on. This is a great addition to the Toy Story franchise. Kicking off our top five, Monsters, Inc. A fun spin on every child's worst nightmare, the monsters under the bed. Only the monsters under the bed aren't out to hurt them. They just work for the power company to supply power for their city. The movie contains one of the best duos in all of the Pixar films. They have amazing chemistry and of course, Boo is absolutely adorable. This movie does what so many Pixar films do so well. It takes something familiar, something that we kind of have an idea of in our head, and turns it upside down and gives it such a fun and clever spin to it, all while giving us characters that we can connect with. In fourth place, Toy Story 4. Now, when this movie was first announced, I was as cynical as anyone and the trailers did not win me over. But as soon as the movie started, I realized that Toy Story 3 closed out the Andy storyline. And this movie was all about finishing Woody's journey. Because of that, the story itself allows Woody to be more of the hero than ever before. And while he still has its his faults. They're explored through his strengths. Add to the mix, you get some great new characters like Forky, Duke Kaboom, and the stuffed animals. All of them put a big smile on my face. But you also get maybe the most complex villain in the Toy Story franchise with Gabby Gabby. Now, these movies have always been about childhood and about evoking this sense of nostalgia. But this movie, more so than the others, is about parenting and letting go and how as you grow up, as you move through the phases of life, your relationships with the people around you change. As a parent, this movie touched me on this whole other level. And because of that, I have the movie ranked much higher than many of you. Real quick, before I give you my top three, remember to join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of the Pixar films. My list isn't the right list. 
It's just my list and I would love to see yours. And if you've enjoyed this video, I've ranked the movies of several other animation studios. I did the DreamWorks movies, Illumination. Last year, I even did all 60 Disney movies. If you've had fun with this video, there's some up here in this playlist that you will enjoy as well. In third place, The Incredibles. And this movie is a real achievement. Brad Bird was able to tell an original superhero story, but packaged with this 60s retro spy movie aesthetic, and it just makes for something wholly fresh and new while feeling familiar in all the right ways. It's a movie about a man having a midlife crisis while having messaging about what makes someone special or incredible. And essentially that's at the core of what a midlife crisis is. As someone gets older, they look back on their life and they wonder, have I done anything that's mattered? Have I done anything incredible? And because of that, it's able to tell a superhero story that in incorporates all of this messaging themes seamlessly because they fit perfectly together. And when everyone's super... <laughs> No one will be. Adding to that is just a phenomenal score. And of course, the usual Brad Bird dynamic action sequences. It's a movie that can be interesting and exciting for four-year-olds because of all the superhero action while having something to say about life to the 40-year-olds who are pondering their own significance. Our runner-up, Toy Story, the original computer animated film and the first trip to the toy chest remains one of the best of all time. Time. Right out of the gate, Pixar cracked the code of how to tell stories that have deep emotional themes, fantastic characters, all while packaging them in a way that will entertain children as well as adults. Now, there's plenty of antics with Buzz Lightyear not realizing that he's a toy. I am Buzz Lightyear. I come in peace. Oh, I'm so glad you're not a dinosaur. But really what makes the movie work is the journey that Woody's on. With all of his insecurities, his jealousy, he has to grow and change. As fantastical as it all is, it captures these real human emotions about how as we age, as we grow up, things change and we have to grow up and change along with them. Other studios have made bigger, more fantastical computer animated films, but at its core, this one did what movies are supposed to do. It told a compelling story that captures the human experience all while doing it with toys. But coming in at number one is Finding Nemo. Now, I was late to the party on this movie. I didn't see it until the year 2013, right around my son's first birthday. And I think for that reason, it kind of shaped my experience with this film. At its core, this is a film about parenting. In the opening sequence, a husband and father loses his wife and all but one of his children, and he becomes overly protective because of the trauma that he has faced. And then in his over controlling nature ends up pushing his son away and he has to go rescue his one remaining child. The story is all about a parent learning to responsibly let go and give him more freedom. And that's at the core of what parenting is. It's raising a child to let them go. It's incredibly profound stuff to put in a movie about talking fish, one of them especially who can't remember anything. And in my case, it was the right movie at the right time. From there, it's just filled with a delightful set of characters. It's jam packed with quotable lines, memorable sequences. And when it kind of crescendos all together, it has quite a bit of emotional punch. And as I've said repeatedly throughout here, for me, it was the right movie at the right time, touching on the right ideas that I needed to learn and experience as a new parent. And therefore, for me, it's entertaining, it's funny, it's quotable, but it's also a movie that just resonated with me. So it comes in at number one. Remember, if you enjoyed this video, I've done other animation studio rankings. I've done Illumination, all 60 Disney movies, all 39 DreamWorks movies. They're right over there in that playlist. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies too much. Bye-bye.